I made my, my testing. They took like a few seconds before it was on. Mm -hmm. Hello, yeah, everyone. It, Hello, Maria. I think it's on now. I'll just double check on the stream. Uh, the, I am checking the stream, so this is the one I have to turn off in case I want it double. But anyway, okay, well, we have started. So this is Learning cool. Together on uh, July 8th, uh, 2013. And we're talking with uh, Joseph Horvath. I hope I pronounced Hello. everything correctly. That's right. It was for Joe. Uh huh. Uh, he's. Oh, I just call him Joe. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Joe is going to talk about uh, this, uh, social media management in education and publishing. And the reason we got him here is because he was nominated as somebody who could manage the TESOL EJ. Um, oh, by the way, am uh, I coming this through? So this is cool. uh, I hear a, I hear an echo, and the echo. Oh, me of, too. Me too. Yeah. The what, what will happen once I? I think it might have been Maria, but maybe she's yeah. fixed it by putting on headphones, or maybe not. I'll go around and out. It could be Sadat. Sadat, and w the way I can. Oh my find gosh! I, I'm like, hearing like three, three streams. So, uh, okay, I'm gonna. I'm muting. I'm going to mute some mics, okay? I think it might have oh been Sadat. Gosh. No, it could be. I'm just muting some microphones. They're not really muting, though. It's funny. It's very, it's very strange. <laughs> yeah, it's probably what you need to do if you're in. Can you please mute yourself when you're not talking? That's the best thing to do. And how do you do that? How do you mute yourself? Oh my gosh, I, I'm hearing like three, three things. You go to the microphone icon in the upper, uh, okay. upper right portion of the stream, and click on mute. And there should be a way I can do it from here, but I don't seem to be able to. So it's very uh, strange. Yeah. So I, and I can, <laughs> I can. <laughs> Do. Okay. Well, anyway, let's put up with it for a minute. And I'll see how I can deal with it once I stop talking. Okay. So anyway, uh, we're at Learning Together, which is on LearningTogether.net. We're broadcasting live on uh, WebHeadsInAction.org, and I believe the stream is going live. I've just been trying to see if it is. It, it could be also that if we're hearing an echo. Could be that somebody is running the stream, and I'm um, just checking that out. Yep, yep, there it is. It's working, so we are streaming correctly. You can also follow us on webheadsinaction.org/live. You can follow the text chat there. There's a text chat at the bottom. You can write in the text chat if you want to interact with us, or you can join us directly on the Hangout. The Hangout is uh, the Hangout link. The direct link is posted at uh, our learningtogether.pbworks.com site. And it's also posted on our um, uh, in the uh, webheadsinaction.org slash live etherpad uh, chat. So the direct links are there, except they're not in the etherpad chat. So I'll rectify that. I'll put it there. But anyway, after that introduction, seems okay now. Actually, it it does. Yes, so the the person who was doing that has muted his mic. And I think it was me. It wasn't the muting, because I muted my mic and I still had the mm -hmm. echo. But uh, I am having like uh, ten or fifteen uh, tabs open, and I forgot to uh, to uh, to stop the the playing that I started <laughs> earlier. Oh, okay. Good. Thanks for telling me that. Yeah. Okay. Well. Anyway, the the etiquette here is either wear headsets like this, or yeah. uh, mute your mic when you're not talking, and uh, then we won't hear the echo from the speakers. But everything seems fine now. And so Perfect. we're ready In just to 10 minutes. <laughs> hear from Joe. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everyone. How's everything? Welcome from Hungary. Yeah, um, Maria, you can say how everything is. You can say just fine. Um, Sadat, you said you didn't have a mic. OK, he's listening. And yeah. Tibor is also, Tibor is a colleague. He has, no mic. he has no mic or a cam, yeah. but uh, can text, uh, right. So we'll be talking about uh, social networking in education and publishing. 
I guess you're here because you're interested in this, but maybe you are more interested in one than in the, the other. So uh, can we like find out, Maria, your interest is where? Both? Just a um, hi, Maria. Hi. No. Oh yeah, he's coming me? through. Yes, I can. Hi. Uh, hi. Well, um, hi. Um, I'm interested in this because um, since I got involved in several groups, um, there has been um, um, it's something new for me, and it's not like you're joining a class uh, the regular way. And so there are different um, things going on, and as a way to understand this. Uh, coming from someone who has been experiencing this for a while, I thought this this would be quite enriching for me. That's why okay. I'm here. Thanks for coming. Thanks. So you're more interested in the educational aspects, right? Okay. You're a teacher. Here. Okay. Here. Okay. Yeah, we, we so hear you. Maybe you muted. I'm not muted. No, no, uh, I was talking to Maria. Oh, uh, okay. I thought she might yes, have been asking. Yes, I'm muting it because probably somebody else wants to talk and, and I, I'm just uh, beginning to get uh, involved in social things and uh, I find this fascinating. I, I'm actually trying to involve more teachers from my country because I think this is the way, uh, the future of teaching and learning, sharing. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's great that people who are uh, on the other side of the world um, take their time to answer our questions. It was uh, like uh, an epiphany for me when Vance asked me to answer a question in, in one of the EVO sessions and, and Nina too. Um, and I think it's great. And I, I wish more people are involved in things like this because a lot of learning is, is going on. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and especially <laughs> I think it's, 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 it's great that Google has it because Google Plus makes it very easy. Uh, I know that Vance likes open platforms. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Yeah. And, uh, 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 and, and I think Google, although it's like, uh, I mean, it's like a free service, uh, I don't know, uh, in terms of, you know, in terms of the students' privacy, what's going on in terms of the data that is being collected when people or students or teachers use Google Plus. Uh, at least uh, right now, there are no advertising links on Google+, Plus, but maybe it's, it's coming in the future. So although I agree with Maria that this could be the future of it in, you know, future kind of direction to involve more social networking uh, uh, experience in teaching various subjects, I think that we really should be very careful about how it's done and what, what kind of data we let these companies collect about us. So that could be some dangers as well, I think. Don't yeah, there, you think? There, something really interesting is, you know, she mentions, Maria mentioned that this is the future. She also mentioned EVO. I should mention that EVO is Electronic Village Online. It's a, uh, an annual event that uh, sort of sponsored by TESOL, but you can find more information about that at evosessions.pbworks.com. But that's mm -hmm. a, a place that a lot of us here uh, interact in that space, uh, especially in January and February when we have our annual sessions. But okay, so, uh, uh, Nina has just posted a link about that. Yes, yeah. .com, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but I was I was going to say that the the future and you know being social media oriented as I should say let's say open resources because um, you know if you look at at Google's dropping Google Reader. There's a lot of speculation over that. And, of course, Google Le Reader... Uh, I, I it's just one said, of the many things that Google has dropped in the past several years. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. So maybe Google yeah. Plus is next. <laughs> Who like knows? Google Wave was one, I think, yeah. and then uh, several other services. Buzz. Google Buzz. Yeah, okay. yeah that's kind of their... Right. But, but Google Plus is more attuned, really, to the social network, uh, to, you know... In a way, it, it was uh, kind of an answer to Facebook. Uh, Facebook had no really good way of differentiating uh, how like you post circles or 
Yeah, by making circles, you can you can you know with Facebook, uh, you have people uh, say uh, posting and inadvertently posting inappropriate things to uh, you know the, like the teacher who goes to raves on weekends posts some kindergarten yeah. students yeah. see it you know, on, the, yeah. on their Facebook. Okay. So uh, in Google Plus was trying to address that by creating circles so that it was easier to differentiate the the crowds that you associated with and keep them apart. So, but uh, having, when they dropped Google Reader, I think it was a statement that said that we're no longer in the RSS era, you know, that... that oh, yeah, like... Yeah, it's, uh, and, like, and, and, uh, and emphasis... Out, yeah, emphasis on Google call. Plus is saying we're in the connected network era, you know, we're... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and you know that's what has replaced RSS. I think a lot of people are going to Feedly. I haven't tried it myself, but Stephen Downs is I, a proponent. And uh, I never was a big reader there. user, uh, so I'm I'm not really missing that service much. So with the other people, Nina and I see Scott is back. Hello, Scott. Uh, so uh, you know, I guess my role here is to. Uh, to answer questions or maybe say something about my experience, oh, but before that, I really would like to find out about your 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 own interests, like what you want to hear about. I don't want to dominate this conversation. It's a good uh, attitude. So if you have, because <laughs> I, you know, some of you may have seen I posted some uh, some comments and some ideas about some topics that we could talk about. But the, yes. you could add to them, or you could you could choose. Yeah. I would depending. Can on, you hear me? Sure. Hello. Yep. I would be I curious hear to you. hear about people's usage of LinkedIn. I've had a LinkedIn account for several years, but never really paid attention to it. But now that I've my career's taken a different course, a lot of people I talk to use it and say you've got to be active on LinkedIn. So I'm trying to build that network, but I don't see. What the uh, what the end point is? Is there an end point? So perhaps people who are using LinkedIn, what are some of your experiences or any suggestions for a LinkedIn uh, uh, a newbie? Please. My experience with LinkedIn is exactly the same as yours, where I resisted it and resisted it and resisted it, and then thought, well, I'm going to retire in a couple of years, and maybe I'll want to do some kind of you know, dabbling and and so maybe I should cultivate LinkedIn or my my account in LinkedIn. But basically, it it just bothers me. You know, I I usually I accept um, I don't know what they're called contacts. Everybody calls yeah, them different. Um, I accept contacts from people that I I know, but I tend not to accept contacts from sort of random people that maybe know somebody that I know or know somebody that somebody I know knows. But doesn't somebody. the same thing happen on Facebook? <laughs> yeah, I stopped I stopped accepting oh. contacts mm -hmm. from people that I didn't know personally or like through web heads. Like if, if you friended me on Facebook after we had this conversation, I would probably accept that. But <laughs> if you know, if somebody you know, Facebook is always suggesting that that you might know so and so because they know somebody that you know and you know That's and right. you know and, and often you know. they are right. And I've you know, I, I read the filter bubble and I I became real aware that Oh, I wasn't seeing everything that all of my gazillion friends on Facebook are posting, and and in particular, I'm missing the stuff from people that I'd really like to hear from. So I'm trying to, you know, I I didn't eliminate really people that that I had, but I I pay more attention to adding people. To the same with there. LinkedIn. The same with LinkedIn, and you know, when I retire, I I would still like to do something with teaching English. So when when sort of random people from other aspects of my life want to uh, make me a contact on LinkedIn, you know, I hesitate and I think, you know, what what possible professional, I, I mean, maybe that's stupid because you never really know where, where an opportunity is going to yeah. come from. 
You mm -hmm. know, it's not necessarily going to be from another English teacher that's going to find you an English job, mm -hmm. a teaching job. So I don't know, but, but so you, you're basically saying that I just, I have this network on LinkedIn, but I never go there. I, I haven't really mm -hmm. developed my profile. Um, so Scott, I'm sorry, I have nothing to say <laughs> except that I'm in the same situation and maybe a little bit people, less active. I think people that decide that they want to join LinkedIn or that they want to do something there uh, will be the ones that think that maybe, as Scott, you said, uh, they might be, uh, they may take, uh, their career may take a new turn. Or well, they think that they might. Or well, at least they don't want that opportunity not to, not to come. Uh, I only I only have LinkedIn uh, contacts that I know, and I have no idea why I have them, because I'm not planning right. to, uh, to 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 move on to a different job. But I might yeah, be. Th that's so I think exactly in terms of why I didn't want to do it. In terms of that being a professional network, I think it's good to have, but I don't visit it too often myself. Uh, it, I don't know what's going on in terms of the uh, you know these uh, these circles within LinkedIn. Like you can join groups. And then uh, they send you uh, messages and uh, stuff. So it could be a good way to network. I just don't know how effective it is. Any one more person? I, if yeah. you look, one if thing you I've look noticed. At, uh, oh, ahead, Scott. One thing I've noticed. I've just been at it for about really three weeks now, and I've gone from maybe thirty contacts to ninety, or close to a hundred. But it seems like everybody I connect with, the one common denominator is Van Stevens. <laughs> Oh, is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wired in, because you can see fellow um, contacts, and uh, the other one is Graham Stanley. So Graham and Vance have sort of uh, blazed the trail in there. So Vance, you probably I, have something to share if you I mind. just, I guess I just do it. I, I mean, I, I just, I, I sort of ignore it in a way. But on the other hand, there's one thing I don't ignore. You need to keep your profile updated. Uh, there's, there's somebody at work who I looked up on LinkedIn, uh, and she still has her old uh, contact there, and so I think that's a little unprofessional, or you know, I don't know. It could look unprofessional to someone, and I think it's really important that you that that's part that you keep that as part of you. You're aware that other people might look at it, as you said, you don't check it, but other people might. might. You know, they might. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and that's some, that's kind of the important thing. It's something like in the '90s on the web. Site under construction that didn't really look too nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what what really annoys me? Yeah. What annoys what me that? about LinkedIn is that it keeps sending you reminders, like somebody has asked to connect with you. I and think you can you turn would, those no, off. Really? I think you can turn because those notifications I keep off. Getting, I, I feel sometimes I feel harassed by LinkedIn. I think that's because I think the default setting. Is for these emails you mean? E email messages you get? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think you can. You, you should turn them off. There's a setting if there. I, if I turned them off, then I would never, ever go ever there. Ever know about those I would, because you I would, would never, totally never, never forget that it exists. Mm -hmm. So that's why you keep them. I guess I don't know. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there, there's probably a, a fine line between what is a really good social network site by sending out notices like that. You know, at some level, or and letting you fine tune it, and uh, you know, so maybe we could ask Joseph what you know, what makes a good social networking site. I'm, I'm finding out a lot about Google Plus, for example, that I really like. It just seems to it, maybe it's because it's got because it hooks into your Google network. It's got uh, credibility or street cred, or you know, it's it's got legs, you know, and uh, so it seems to be effective. I wonder yeah. what makes what are the effective sites? I mean, maybe that comes to a question like Joseph has been asked to uh, be a manager for the Tesla EJ web presence, you know, social media presence, because it's hard to manage. I, f I find it hard to manage when I'm trying when I'm announcing learning together. I'm learning a lot about uh, how to manage that myself, uh, but I find it very time consuming to. Post to Facebook, post to, and I don't post to LinkedIn, but that's another possibility. But you know, uh, posting to different circles in Google Plus, you know, it's time consuming. It's something you have to do. And then there are some sites that, like Scoop, Scoop it, for example, that will will post for you automatically. Or some sites you can set up to spread all your posts automatically. I think Nellie yeah. Deutsch has, has a good handle on that because a lot of the things that she 
she's got a lot of automatic postings you can see in. You mean these cross uh, posting, like you post it on Twitter and then it will spread yes. everywhere in your social? Yeah, channel. yeah, exactly. I mean, it saves a lot of work. It's not a bad idea, but it uh -huh. gives you a, I'm, gives I'm, you a I'm, certain. I'm, uh, uh -huh. Go ahead. So that kind of like uh, it's useful because then you don't have to do it manually for each of your uh, social networking sites. But I just wonder whether the same message can serve the purpose on various different uh, social networks. Like something that you post on Facebook, True. you may not want to post on 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 uh, on LinkedIn. Mm. So I I, I I think what what makes a good social network is a good society. Like may, being able to to keep uh, good contact with with the right people that you have, and then to see how that can be extended in the in the in the electronic or internet space. I think it's if it's very different uh, how we are when we are interacting with people face to face from how we do that when we do it uh, on screen. I don't think that's a good idea. But I think we also need to be able to to see what we really think we can do. On those sites, for for example, Tiso EJ, I know that Maggie Sokoli, the uh, editor in chief, is using uh, Facebook and Twitter uh, for for keeping in touch with the readers. I think um, one way in which we can make it easier, that is the the kind of managing, is uh, is is the kind of automi automation, like autom automating things like uh, you know keeping in touch with the readers. Like I am as a reader of the journal. I'd be interested in uh, who else or how many other people have read that same article, and I think that's possible to post as a as a piece of info at the end of each or maybe at the top of each article, if it belongs within the you know if it's like if it's acceptable to the to the editors. It's a good uh, idea, and it's it's at a WordPress blog, so. Uh, and I, I, I know that the analytics is available. I'm just wondering whether. Whether the the internet uh, uh, person, the, the, uh, I forget the name. Sorry, I forget the name. Uh, I'll just check. Editorial board. Uh, oh, uh, Maggie. Production assistant, maybe Tom? Shari Gray, Tom? or. Oh. Mm -hmm. I th I, so the production assistant, whoever is it is that uh, is taking care of that. Whether it's easy to do, because I think that would be interesting to see how how the journal itself can. Uh, because the journal itself is a social network, right? I mean, people go there because they are interested. They keep it. They they uh, they keep in mind that the new edition or the new issue is going to come out every third month. Have you seen uh, Maggie uh, uh, posted the message on Twitter in April? Uh, One million visitors on the TSO EJ site. That's uh, almost as big as yeah. Facebook. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that. <laughs> That's one uh, hundred one per one percent. What was it? <laughs> one tenth of percent of uh, of Facebook users, uh, and also, I mean, maybe on each page there could be like a link to Facebook and Twitter, so people who might want to like it within their circles can 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 do so. So some of these, uh, you know, posting messages shouldn't even be done by the manager in him or herself, but the reader. Who comes to the to the to the TSO EJ page if it's possible? So that would be something that I would recommend thinking about for sure. In terms of my uh, social networking sites, I prefer Google Plus. I'm on Facebook as well because my students are. And as uh, as uh, Nina said earlier, I resisted Facebook for many many years, or maybe one. Uh, year, but then I decided to join because so many students wanted me to be there, and being there really shows me a lot of things about how they, you know, about their world, about their social networking, about their about their lives, and it's very interesting to to know, you know, the interests which I would not know maybe in any other way. So I think Facebook really is. Uh, I mean, I knew about my students before, but the way the things that I know about them now. Are very different, and I think the two together are important for teachers to know. I think you you have a very interesting way of interacting with your students. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about that and show us some links. Are you meaning uh, my classes, or or uh, in terms yeah, of the your, your, web? Uh, 
what do you call it, punctuation picnic or something like that. And uh, I like to do fun things. You come up with, with it. And one of my uh -huh. classes, one of my courses, I I like a lot is reading and writing skills for BA students. So these are Hungarian students studying at a at a Hungarian university, English, and they will get a BA degree. And one course is for their uh, reading and writing skills development in English. And uh, you know, one topic that many students don't like is punctuation because it's hard, they think. Uh, of course, not having punctuation is even harder because imagine not having punctuation, what would, what would it be like to try to figure out all those sentences? But I don't like it much, but I, uh, I, you know, one thing I developed in terms of, again, this is like a connection between like an actual face-to-face -face, uh, lesson and something that is like an electronic thing, so I combine the two, like I think the the uh, the term would be blended learning or something. So uh, I make videos and uh, we go to a park and we have a picnic in the punctuation park and uh, when you go to uh, there's a link I think on uh, on the together learn together site. Which yeah, the last posted. link that's posted in the text. So chat. if you want if you yeah, want to see some there. of those, yeah, you can see those. Uh, yeah, you can uh, you can click on them if you want. Yeah, you can find so I use I use the, uh, the iPhone and the iMovie app for that, and I put together a little trailer uh, after the sessions to just show them what we did, and maybe to uh, to other people like Vance you and could put some the, of you. Here. You could put the link to your YouTube channel, and uh, people could ex be exploring that maybe. You talking about me? Yeah, mm -hmm. but Is, isn't it there? Uh, maybe. Let me just. I think it's. Uh, uh, just uh, I saw the trailer, it's, it's there. which I found very interesting. But I didn't. So is it? Is it a normal class in the park? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes oh. we don't go to the park because the weather is bad. Uh -huh. uh, but often we do, and. Uh, so you cheat them it's, into thinking that you're you're giving them something new, but it's a regular punctuation. I, yes, I want them to remember <laughs> it. See, I mean, sometimes it happens that students go to a class and you know next week they forget what it was about. There's no way they can forget the punctuation part class. Okay. Because they went to a different right. kind of place. They, you know, and they can actually bring their you know drinks and food and snacks. So they will remember sure. it, and we have in interesting activities in terms of. Have you have any of you ever had a uh, any of you any ever had problems with the with the uh, uh, comma splice error? <laughs> yeah, a few. How to deal with that? Uh, I think the punctuation park exercise can take care of that too. Punctuation park. So is that on the video? Oh, it is. Yes. If I maybe I'll be able to uh, to maybe. play it. If I go to my, they, uh, if I share way, my screen. No, but it, there's another way to sh share a movie. I think. Isn't I can there? share. Yeah. There's a YouTube app here or something. Yeah, YouTube download. app. Oh, Watch I know, I know. That's together. the. That's the. <coughs> so shall I? I think that I would work better. Try that. Hangout. Yeah. Is it the Hangout toolbox? It's, uh, uh, it's yeah. Un it's under under the... slide share. Oh, it's where you get. Well, yeah. Oh, you will ask for me. Bottom it's one. A, it's the red, on the, yes, the, the red, uh, a white arrow on a red background. It says YouTube and females over it. Uh, let's see if I start um, it. Mine isn't I red until it. I mouse there. <laughs> I oh, okay, it. so you got it. Okay, let's thanks. See. Okay. I'm not. I'm not oh, sure I need to what I'm doing it. here. I'm waiting. Okay. okay, welcome. Ah, oh, Michael oh, Coughlin. Hi, Mike. Hi, Michael. Cool. Where is Michael? He's in Australia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How's it going there? Good to see you. Good to see you. Oops. Jo Joseph, I just had a look at your little test run from a couple of hours ago. It was very funny, very entertaining. Thank you. Oh, which one? Which one? Which one? Where you're trying to figure out. Oh, the one where you put the hat on and the glasses, and we, you were trying to show different screens, and it was just, it was, it was entertaining. Oh, I know, I know. That was like, yeah, six, seven years ago. <laughs> uh, Michael, we developed an echo. Echo. We can 
I can see that you got a headset on, but there's something running in the background there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, I think that might have got that it. Should, that should be better. Yeah. That's, That's much better. better. Right. So, uh, how do we go to the YouTube thing? So I go click. I don't know. It is it if we anyway, right. you will be able to go and see it when you are if you are interested. Yeah, go to my. That might be better. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think so we should I'm, figure out how to do this. <laughs> Wait a second. All right. Okay, maybe we should. Okay. I, so I am right. going to try to do this. Okay. Watch. I'm clicking okay. on it. Opening okay. YouTube. Okay. Blah, do it, blah, do it blah. Welcome to YouTube. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. When, when you're ready, just play the share the video. <laughs> okay. And are you sure this is the one for for looking for videos together? This app. I, yeah, it's 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 more complicated than I thought because it's saying to paste. Um, oh, paste add videos to the play playlist. Yeah. Okay, so let me just see punctuation mark. Oh, okay, we're all experimenting. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yes, okay, here's one. So how about? Can you see it now? So I, what was going on? Oh, did you see it, it? It came and then it stopped. It, it but did? That's, but okay, actually, so I just wanted to find. Yes, actually it says if I hit play, it says I can. I started yeah. it again. Uh, cool. Okay. And then there's a green button that says push to talk. Yeah. So I guess we each can control the YouTube, right? Yeah, it looks like it. I think, yeah. 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 So shall we see it? Yeah, it's yes, yes. Minute. Go ahead. Play it. So produced so by the apostrophe <laughs> pictures. Yes. Yeah. Quite a production. So this was last year actually. Yeah, so I don't inside. understand what actual how they're actually learning punctuation. It's really nice <laughs> video, but then what happens? I, I mean, okay, so there were like special you may have seen there were a semicolon. Yeah, there was a special guest, a student of mine who uh, who had written his thesis that year about the comma. So he actually covered the comma and how it can be learned, and he interviewed people. So he knows he knows everything about the comma. And then uh, students <laughs> uh, before the lesson, they got tasks to prepare, in their questions, etc. And you may have seen some worksheets on the desks. Uh huh. Like that was a, that was a plural Sundays with an apostrophe because the apostrophe, of course, is the big problem nowadays. Actually, I'm, I was wondering, do we even need to teach punctuation? Because, you know, whenever you look at even uh, professional writing, there are so many errors there. So maybe it's not really valid to even deal with it anymore, either. Uh, well, you could say the, the same thing about comma splices. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could say the same thing about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, yeah, I just, just, wonder, be, you know, just because, because native speakers can't write, doesn't mean I'm going to stop trying to get my my own students to write better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but maybe in the future that could be like an alternative spelling with or without the apostrophe in the plural. What a hideous thought. That's, well, I, I find it hideous <laughs> myself, yeah. So, you know, it's like, it's like one of these, you know, just not, it's like 90 minute session. Uh, half of this is like speaking, eating, drinking, having fun. The other half, is the actual exercises that deal with uh, some of these problems like the comma splice or 
or uh, other things. Uh, like, mm-hmm. you know, also not just, also like things which are partly uh, punctuation and partly grammar, because of course the two things are connected. Like uh, well, the I... dangling modifier and the and the other modif. We have a new, jo- someone joined? My, not Daniel, Michael, but... Daniel Bessel. How are you? Okay, hello. Daniel? Is your mic working? Hi. Can you? Maybe you're muted. Yeah, usually you come in muted by default, so you have to. Okay. Especially with eight people. Mm-hmm. Okay. I asked um, Joseph well, to to tell us something about his teaching style because I just find it, uh, you know, paints a, it helps us to picture him and uh, and his character and his uh, his approach to. Uh, uh, teaching and you know obviously and connecting with people, but back on the topic, uh, social okay. media. I guess I have three questions. That, you know, these are the three questions I'd like to approach. Uh, you know, so to, to sort of guide this uh, conversation. Okay. Conversation. And one of the questions is, uh, you've already started talking about this. How will you? Uh, how will? How do? You, wh- what can you do to enhance the social media of the Tesla EJ site? That's one thing. And this, the other question is how, maybe let's take an example like learning together, what should we be doing to, uh, to enhance our social media connectivity? And then for other people, and the third question is actually one that might come from anybody else who has a similar kind of question. Uh, what can they do, you know, how, what, what's the strategy they should follow or what are some strategies that you can follow? You know, sort of, how do you promote yourself? How does yeah? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll let you take over after that. Can I jump in with a, a more basic question? I'd like to ask Joe how he defines social media and what what are, is excluded from social media. That I mean, is is YouTube social media? I mean, I obvious some things are obvious like Facebook and LinkedIn and maybe Digo and delicious it can be used in a social way but like I've never done that so I'd, I'd like to hear how you how you define social media and then you go to Vance's questions <laughs> okay well I wish I had known about that question in advance I never, never really thought about that but I can only think of the examples of social media I'm using and maybe what's <laughs> uh, what's common in them and I think what's common is that there's always uh, a circle of people <clears throat> that feel that they want to be together and that they like the way they can be together, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, of course, determines how they can interact. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so I so do, it's an interactive I do, site? Uh, I think so. If it's social, it should be interactive to some degree. And you're free to, uh, you're free to decide, as in any free society, uh, to what degree you want to interact with whom. But I guess, and you're just coming back to your example of uh, LinkedIn before, uh, you, you resisted for a long time, but then there was the, some motivation that still made you want to join. But then the way of interaction is up to you. In terms of education, the, uh, the, the social media I use are blogs, ebooks, YouTube, and uh, sometimes Twitter. Uh, which I try to integrate in my classes, but not like there's a task for people to read or to have to read Twitter, but I just make some of these things available because uh, I think they try and they, they might help to, to maintain a continuity and they are based on the presumption or assumption that some people will remember that Joe has a Twitter account or maybe they want to visit YouTube or visit a student's ebook. Uh, that's something that I do often in these classes that I that you just saw the reading and writing skills class. Students, the students uh, write books. Bl- uh, yes, I started the blogs a few years ago, and since then, in the last few years, we have moved on uh, to ebooks. And there's an interesting kind of connection between the two what makes a a blog entry a blog entry and what makes a a book page a book page very interesting the differences and uh, how how do you make an ebook an ebook I uh, well actually not me it's the students that do it yeah but Uh, how what kind of application are they using 
so actually, the most important application, I think, in any social medium is the person's mind. I think that mind should be challenged given interesting activities. And then the actual technical aspect is not really... I'm, I'm trying to look for services and uh, experiences which are simple. You know, I'm an Apple guy. I like simplicity of Apple software. Uh, I wish I could use iBooks with my students. Uh, you know iBooks? Uh, iBook Publisher, I think it's called. Uh, it's like a, it's it's a, it's a tool. It's it's a, it's a tool with which you can make available your work on on the iPad and soon on the Mac as a book. But uh, because students don't he, don't have that, I try to look for the second best solution, and one of them is feed books. Uh, let me just sh have you ever heard feed books like F I F E E D books? Hmm. It's it's a site where you can very simply put together a book with your cover uh, page and then uh, it keeps track of, uh, of your readers as well. So that's what my students have been using uh, in the past several years. Feed books. Feed books, yes. Dot com. That's right, yes. And, uh, sorry, there's an S to D. Feed book. Sorry. Yes, feedbooks.com. So, do you want to see a book by a student? Yeah. Sure. Just say no if you don't. No, no. <laughs> okay, let me that would be good. Let me just show you one of these. Can you see my screen? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me turn this. This is actually a map of one of the books and the downloads from these places. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, your, student, is, your student wrote a book and people right. in those places that's downloaded right. it. That's right. This one, actually, the one from two years ago, it was called I Can't Be 16 Again. Neither can uh, I. <laughs> well, that was a pretty good story, actually, by the student, and that was the title story. I uh, can't so be it 60 was, again. I can't be 16 again. <laughs> 16. <laughs> I see. I sorry. Yeah, I got that. So uh, you see the uh, you see the downloads in the past thirty days, and you can also see the formats in which they were downloaded, and then the places where these people came from, like India, United States, Philippines, China, etc. Also Hungary, four percent. And let me just show you the book itself. Uh, and and go back how did the student get this kind of audience? Oh. Uh, they put it on the uh, feed books and they uh -huh. used the uh, you know tags uh -huh. actually let me just show you one the best in terms of the best seller so these How are the come it, it gives you as the as the author rather than the student it's because that was i was the editor and the students were the authors and these others let me just show you this one being an average girl by melinda farkas and balash palfi look at the t can you see the tags here Mm. Yeah. Yes. Nonfiction, health, nature, mm. pets, and cats. So of course, if you good, if you give good tags, lots of people will come to your page and look at that. Almost three thousand downloads oh. in just mm -hmm. in just I think two years or one one year. Yes. Nice. In so just one students year. can use this to practice reading each other's writing and exactly. Write and uh, <laughs> in my classes, uh, when students are working on the. Uh, on the on the book, it's 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 actually two people working on one book, so and they can decide how many of the stories one person writes and how many uh, of the stories another person is gonna edit. So they are authors and editors. Uh, and this past semester, actually, one of the student one of the books was written by four people, and that was actually one of the best uh, the best uh, books this semester. This past so semester. are they writing fiction, nonfiction, and uh, fiction and nonfiction? <laughs> yeah. So I try to ask them to try and just have one book with just one type, and uh, they don't always manage, but that's okay. I think the first so. book could be like a, a mixture. And again, how can we tell the difference between fiction and nonfiction all the time? That's getting hard. Excuse me, harder. Joseph. Yes. Sorry for jumping in. I'm I'm very. Sure intrigued and excited what you're talking about. I've never heard of this resource before. And that last book you just showed us, was it On yeah. Being an Average Girl? Was that the title? That's right. 
I thought the, the cover, it as quickly as I saw it, the cover was fascinating with the color and the design and the text on it. Uh, do you know anything about your your students' process in creating the cover? Are they graphic designers, or does the website provide templates for that? There's, there are no templates here, uh, and I asked everyone to do what for their books everything originally. So there's no copying or looking for a Google picture, unless they can get the uh, permission from the pub from the. Uh, photographer or the painter. So this particular one I think was a friend's work they, that they commissioned to make for this book, this original cover, which of course contains some uh, original uh, elements like the piano I guess is like maybe like a mm -hmm. uh, like a paint thing and the cat, but the actual and the black cat uh, on collage, the yes. So, uh, but it's put together uh, in the way they wanted it to be put together. Well, so great, I, what I a don't great think experience, are and you could, you could, you could find that I think my 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 hunch is that combination of good tags and a, a compelling title, you know, and a title that grabs your attention, and nice graphic art on the sure. cover would be something that would yeah. draw people in to download it. Just yeah, those, and it's those something that is not elements. just for not just for maybe one person, a teacher, or maybe a group, but uh, international audience like the people here now. I'll tell these two students exciting. about this book being, you know, none of my books have been published in 3,000 copies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in how, terms how of... Much, uh, the, how much yeah. copy editing is done to uh, ensure accuracy in the language and who, who is responsible for that? Oh, the, the, the students are. And what's nice about... And what's the, the product uh, like? <laughs> Uh, the pr I, I think they are pretty good. I think, uh, you know, when you think, when you look at, uh, for example, the New York Times and you see all those typos, uh, I think... Uh, <laughs> I see okay, if you're comparing it to the New York Times, it must not be too bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, I think what I like in these is that students really feel that this is something that is their work, is their first English book. It's something that they can put, they can put it in their CVs and say, well, I published this book, Look at 3,000 uh, downloads in these past several years. Uh, I could collaborate with someone. And also because of the emphasis on originality, I think that's something that I wanted you to, I, I just wanted to mention. You know, plagiarism is a big problem on the internet as well as in education. And yes, uh, it is. actually, I have done research about that topic recently. And uh, most people actually try and deal with it using these, uh, punch, uh, these plagiarism detection tools. So they try to deal with it after the e event. And I think it's best to, to have like tasks which invite the student's originality when the focus is on the positive. And I'm finding that with this ebook and the blog projects, there's a lot, lot less interest, quote unquote, in being uh, unoriginal than, uh, than be when without that. So I think this kind of social network helps maybe in the long run society itself because there'll be more emphasis on originality. And, and the students certainly should feel that the teacher is also interested in, this, in these books and these products, which of course I am. So uh, do you mark them in any conventional sense or do you let the number of downloads be the Marking. Oh, <laughs> no, not the downloads. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, interaction for, with your yeah, book is a real. Uh, yeah, it would be valid. Very but, strong uh, indicators. You know, yeah. uh, uh, these books usually uh, are happening at the end of the semester, uh, like one or two weeks before the end, so there wouldn't be enough data about the downloads yet. And also, you know, some books need like time, you know. Mm -hmm. for people to discover them. So uh, what I do is uh, usually it's, uh, it's the, the students evaluate their work and I do too and we, keep, and we split the, the difference. So they give 50% and I give the other 50% of the mark. And we agree on the criteria, hmm. uh, like what to look at in a book. Mm -hmm. That's good. So it's all, yeah. all collaborative. And it's collaborative so interesting because sometimes my marks are higher than the students, which is very strange. 
I, that's not surprising to me, because no? a lot of e either the you know their expectations are unrealistic. Maybe or yes, you're right. Yeah. Maybe they you know, think they're just I being would. modest. Mm -hmm. Could be yes, yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. So coming I'd back like to the to question ask, of yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go, I was come just, back to the I wanted, oh. Yeah, go back to the question. Okay, so in terms of the definition, what is your definition of social networking? I'm interested. Well, social media, you said. It's also, you know, a list of things that are definitely social or maybe optionally so social, the way I said. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I would never have thought of ebooks as a social medium. Um, Michael asked that question. I was just about to ask it, and and you've shown us how you can take something that's not intrinsically a social medium mm -hmm. and make it a social medium. Yeah. So maybe the use to which you put something is is more more. Oh yeah, and the and the purpose important. of the of the group to be together because in each so in each social network there are small groups, subgroups, interaction between the groups themselves and uh, are, are they doing most of their interacting in the same physical space or are they yes. doing it online? Yeah, they're in terms in of class. the yeah, they are yeah, they do. And the yeah. writing gets done in class. And uh, we always have uh, 15 minutes every 90 minutes for reading and writing they work. I mean for them to to write them together or edit etc. I actually have uh, in my in uh, in my syllabuses something I'm uh, pretty proud of. You know, in Hungary, most university sessions are 90 minutes long, and the groups meet just once a week. So it's not like in the U.S., for example, where they might meet three times or two times. It's once a week for each course, and for this for these uh, sessions for these weekly meetings. I only always plan 75 minutes, and in each of my courses, there's this 15 minute slot that the students decide based on what they want, what their needs are, and how they want, for example, to work on their books or whatever. It's, it's like the Google effective. strategy, this 80-20 thing. 20% oh, doing... Uh -huh. Yeah, I saw that on Google. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, uh, I don't know, like what they do. They work 80% of the time and they do something that really, really, they they want to do That's the right. other 20%. Something like that. And they yes. come up with the original things. Yeah, I think that's very important for, you know, at university especially, but also maybe high school and elsewhere, to rely on the students' innate originality and creativity. And uh, I think social networking should help us see this creation, these creations. It's something I like to get. Joseph, can I ask, do you, is there any, you've said that students look at each other's work and I can imagine that just happens naturally out of curiosity, but is there any formal assessment of each other's peer review of others' work? Uh, not An formal, assessment. not formal uh, and not beyond the actual book producer, so the students themselves that, that make a book together will assess their own work, but it's not like the students will assess someone else's. Uh, I don't think they would have time for that. Again, mm -hmm. you know, these books are usually like, uh, well, quite long actually. Well, in terms of, uh, you know, the other re requirements for the course. So, uh, they, they tend to be toward the end of the semester and I will not want, I don't think I could require students to, I don't think I would require people to, to do something in such short notice. But it, it, it's a good, I mean, maybe you are asking it because you are saying that it should be? Well, peer review is something that comes up regularly yeah. as a, a very, well, there are, there are different views. Some think peer review is rubbish and a waste yeah. of time. My heart tells me that peer review is a very good thing to do and I imagine it would be a very sophisticated task and writing yeah, the thing is hard I, enough. I, I, but I, use, I use it in the, for the other tasks but not for the ebooks just because they 
like coming to the end of the course. And it probably well, happens of, informally, as you suggest, but it's not it's not part of their grade. It's not for the ebook, no. Yeah, but for the uh -huh. others, for the blog yeah. entries, for example, or for the other essays that they write. And uh, certainly, it's you know, it's, it's not only writing class; it's also reading. So it's a reading and writing course, skills course. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just focusing on one one skill. And I guess you have to get that balance between letting the creativity flourish and not wanting to squash it with too many people saying, I think you should do this or you could do that better or maybe you should put a comma here. <laughs> well, commas help sometimes, yeah. Uh, but in terms of the, the freedom, I think that is very, very important uh, of education. And the way it appears in my classes Again, coming back to the syllabuses, uh, I always emphasize freedom so much so that I often give like lots of synonyms for the word uh, right in the syllabus, and uh, so students can choose the you know I and tasks that they can do, and they choose the the three or four or five that they want to do. Sometimes they go up to six or seven, uh, and many choose to do the books as the uh, the ebooks as well, but they are not required to make a book. But many do okay. decide to, to, to do one. Yeah. So, so uh, Nina's got a question in there about Google excuse me, Joseph. Yeah. Let me let me jump in for just a second, and it ties into the question that. I'm oh, sorry. Was wasn't Vance saying something? As Vance or St yeah. you? I can wait. No, no, no. I I wasn't. Go ahead. Okay, Scott. Nina's question is about Google communities and do you use them, but prior to that, if you don't mind, I remember last year I wound up in a Hangout that you were conducting with one of the graduate student in Google Hangouts, and is this something that you've worked with? A, what's been your experience with Google communities if you use it, and okay. B, how has meeting with Google, using Google Hangouts almost as an office hours and opening it to the public been a successful experiment? Uh, I haven't used uh, them as an office hour. I try, but many of my students don't use it. I mean, Google Plus is. Uh, that, I don't have many students in my circles. I, I talked about when you said, "Did you mean like this ha one hangout we once had together, you and a student of mine and, and me?" Right. I think that was last summer. Uh, yeah, that was the very rare occasions. But it uh, oh. just so happens that you were part of that too. Yeah. So uh, I don't use uh, Google Plus in my classes. The reason is that all these uh, the, the Google Plus Hangouts is that uh, in terms of students, the uh, the young ones in Hungary, they are the Facebook people, and they don't want to add an, one more. They just don't feel the need for it. Like uh, like uh, Nina resisting uh, LinkedIn. Uh, students resisting uh, Google Plus. Maybe they will be joining as they see more and more people coming uh, on board. Uh, and you are asking because you are using it, Scott, or you would like to consider? No, I, I'm I'm not. I just remembered that experience and thought it was neat. Yeah, I okay, that was just like. One... Yeah, I I do see the potential For there. Me, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen a very nice instance of the potential, and for me, I'm sure I sound like a one-trick pony. It always comes back to yeah. DS-106, but uh, last quarter, Alan Levine ran DS-106, and he was online the whole time, and the students, the, the, the credit-paying students were in Virginia, and he was in Hong Kong and Australia during the course of the semester, and each week, he would meet with the students in this digital storytelling class in a hangout, and he would task one or two specific students to be the co-hosts, meaning that they would have to prepare uh, questions sure. or comments, and other students wouldn't join in. And plus, being the DS-106, um, other people from the internet came in. And then Alan turned each of these hour-long meetings into a wonderful video. And I was just so impressed with the quality of the commentary and the engagement that the, the assigned students had each week. You, Alan's got these eight or nine different hour-long episodes available that you can go back and watch. I was blown away. These were students who, when just as you've done with these books, you set a high expectation for the learners, and 
more often than not, if you give them the freedom, they'll they'll stun you, they'll amaze you with what they can do. Absolutely, so, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's kind of where I am with it. Just yeah. on the sidelines, I've not done anything personally. And then the Google yet. experience is just like a forum where this can take place, right? And because it's simple, it's easy to manage. Is that what you're saying, Scott? I I don't really know that I, I'm saying anything with a thesis. I'm just kind of okay, okay, okay. <laughs> sort of freewheeling it here. Uh, uh oh. It's fun and it's immediate, and as you say, the the Google uh, mm -hmm. situation makes it pretty easy to do. Okay, so Nina asked what DS one one hundred six was, and now you know it, right? Digital storytelling. And then Daniel, you asked, are you teaching the work of marketing the stories or building the community? Are you asking it of? Yeah, can I just add to what Dan has asked? I mean, <coughs> that's another aspect of social media, which I actually feel quite uncomfortable with, where you actually have to advertise what you've done. So do you teach that or encourage your students to publicize what they do? I haven't yet. No, not yet. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of advertising you mean, like letting the others know about this, like sharing links. Letting the world know through Twitter, Facebook, etc. Uh, no, I haven't if, done If that. I could jump in, uh, can, can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. This is Daniel. Yes, hi uh, Daniel. Th this question of marketing, this, uh, it's nice to see you all again. Uh, this question of marketing is, is really important to me because outside of the education establishment where the exercise is one of learning how to create something or learning uh, content, when you get it outside into the real world, uh, sharing your ideas uh, effectively is, is one skill, but increasing the number of people who look at your ideas and might join you and support those is a totally different skill. And, and on the internet, you have the ability to do both. You can create the content and you can market the content. Uh, and a group of people can work together, like in the, uh, the MOOCs that are going on right now. People are on Twitter and Google and other places using hashtags uh, that are drawing uh, their friends to a common space. So it's the group doing the marketing that's increasing the overall traffic to the group. Right, and that's so important it, because people. It, it's social. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, and 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 uh, if in problem solving, it, whether it be poverty or the economy or the environment or whatever, these are complex problems that require a growing number of people to stay engaged over many many years. Most of the people don't have advertising dollars uh, to attract people to the cause, therefore teaching people who are beginning to use social media to do the daily outreach of their invitations uh, in order to draw people uh, to their products. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the student that had 3,000 reads of the book uh, maybe had been out on Twitter or Facebook or other things saying to friends, look at my book. Uh, and maybe other people were doing the same thing. So that's something that it's a skill, I think, that needs to be taught. Sure. And uh, it should be done, taught by people that have the skill. I don't think I do uh, have the skill of marketing. And uh, I think I agree with Nina. Effective tagging is very useful. And uh, effective and as well as valid tagging, I think. So let's not you know, make people have higher expectations of a book or whatever other, other content have than, uh, than what we can actually meet. Uh, but yeah, marketing important depending on the, on the kind of uh, topic, I think. Uh, I think an audience will be developed if, if the content is right. I think people will find, I mean, in terms of traffic, the, the public or the, uh, the audience Will, will gravitate to the content that they like. And certainly, uh, people can you know, help each other. I mean, a student can let the, another group know about this. And I'm sure they have, uh, I've seen on Facebook, many people, for example, sharing their books, links, stuff like that. Uh, but you know, 
I, I, it can also be like a, the other extreme could be too much marketing could lead to like spamming and again a balance should be found between the right audience knowing about uh, what you think they should know about and maybe what uh, Nina would like to avoid being uh, annoyed by these notifications about what's going on in, in LinkedIn. I, I think this is a, a crucial question Daniel's brought up and he's alluding to the I think the case of uh, people who are engaged through some passion or commitment to an issue and I, I think initially when I heard the word marketing I took it as a pejorative just because of my own bias but I, I totally take your point Daniel I think that's an important one but there is kind of the other side that I think Joseph, you were hinting at, and this is what, I don't know, maybe I'm cynical, but I see media, media people, you know, mainstream media or people who are in the business get into these networks with a Twitter account or a Facebook, and the extent of their involvement is saying, my show is on tonight at 8 o'clock, tune in, or sign up for a free t-shirt. So right. the old marketing hacks have really figured yeah. out how to leverage this stuff, and it, it's it's a turnoff, but yeah. on the other side, um, those of us without yeah, sure. a big yeah, marketing budget can make use of these tools and reach a far wider audience than ever has been possible before. And again, I I think I'm pretty savvy with this stuff, but I wouldn't want to hang up a shingle saying I'm going to teach you how to do this. I think maybe we can learn from the young people because they're living it every day. The young people. <laughs> <laughs> us old geezers, yes. let's well, learn the from the young people. Yes. Well, the adult, you know? we should, uh, but yeah, I guess the millennials is what they're being called now. You know, I think they might have a more innate or intuitive sense of this stuff, and maybe mm -hmm. be less cynical than some of us old geezers. Yeah, they certainly have different uh, kind of wishes and uh, and and experiences and maybe desires. I've you know I just some a recent example in terms of marketing. Uh, you can often see students, you know, taking a job, going to work at a different company, and they start advertising that company in their Facebook uh, timeline. Just like you know, on the right there's a there's an advertising column, and on the timeline, I don't know whether I want to see uh, adverts. But then that's what the students want to do. So uh, it's uh, it's you know it's in their timeline. That's okay. So so uh, I think that. Uh, Yes. Go ahead, Daniel. I I, I just I was just going to ask. I, what, I think you, that uh, there will. There's a lag, I think. There. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to ask Daniel about your your marketing ideas. Uh, what do you think is a, a good solution, well, a good way? I I've uh, been on the internet since about 1998, and I do lead a social cause in uh, Chicago. Uh, intending to uh, connect tutors and mentors uh, with inner city kids. So the recruiting of volunteers, the recruiting of donors, uh, the attracting people to uh, information that they could use to understand the problems, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a marketing, that's an advertising uh, responsibility. So I've been, uh, as the tools have changed over the years, I keep adopting LinkedIn and Facebook and email and other types of things to reach out into a worldwide network of people say uh, and be just like I'm part of this conversation uh, I'm here because I'm learning something but I'm also here because I'm sharing something uh, uh, and and the intent is that uh, more people are engaging young people and adults in online learning that leads to problem solving in different cities so, for instance, I started putting uh, PDF articles on Scribe about uh, October 2011, and I've had about 55,000 reads since then. Uh, but that's because I'm out every day uh, saying, take a look at this, take a look at that. Yeah, engaging um, with the if, audience. If you look, you're engaging, engaging. So, you know, I think that there'll be some uh, coursework begin to be done. Uh, if you think of the Arab Spring, uh, if you think of Turkey, if you think of Brazil, these are engagements that are taking place as a result of social media. Uh, right. The uh, and, response to the hurricane in Haiti, uh, the fundraising was a, a, a social media response. And uh, uh, 
those are short-term responses to a, a, a big issue. Uh, now, the question is, will people learn to use social media to draw continued response and involvement in solving the problems that exist in those different parts of the world? Or will they just tweet about them? Uh, tweeting is there's one thing to say, take, uh, here's a nice idea. There's a different thing to say, let's get together and do something about it. Sure, exactly. Yeah, I think you're right. Nina, you're asking about the people, like uh, where do they find out what? Oh, I just have uh, a couple of blogs that I've been keeping and I set them to automatically go to Facebook and Twitter when I post. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, right. That's the one difference b between these blogs and other blogs that I've had. And right. every single time, pretty much, I, I put up a post, almost every time, some, somebody likes it that is not in my circles, <laughs> is not on my list of contacts. I have no idea how they how they got to the blog but it, so the, but some, it has some something to friends. do with the fact that they're they're not my friends I don't know who these people are but maybe <laughs> I don't one know of your friends shared with their circles right yeah That's well possible. maybe but I mean it happens it happens regularly and frequently it's mm -hmm. just really interesting to me could also be like simple search maybe people looking for that content yeah maybe because I'm, I'm tagging also, yeah. Yeah. Nina, what I when I people? read <laughs> Nina, when I read something which is really really interested, I usually re retweet it. Uh, so that's probably what people are doing. They retweet. That's interesting because I don't think the, my blogs are that interesting. Yeah, they they don't follow you. They no, you know they what? don't necessarily follow you on Twitter or uh -huh. on Facebook, but but, but somebody's they read what you yeah. and. Um, there is another thing. What you write is interesting. <laughs> Perhaps, yes. Why shouldn't they like it? <laughs> <laughs> and Nina, maybe, you can, maybe you can ask this question on your blog. Who are you people? <laughs> right, well. Um, I'm out of the closet. The blogs you know, don't, I... lend, don't lend themselves to that kind of, of uh, thing, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, I should. And, and some of them I, I am now following their blogs. I mean, some of them are part of the WordPress community. Yeah. And big. maybe WordPress is doing some little intra WordPress marketing. Um, because mm -hmm. they'll, like, if somebody likes the blog, there will be at the bottom, you know, these bloggers like, like this post. And they're all WordPress bloggers. So maybe their WordPress is doing something additional. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but but I've picked up you know some people that are doing the same things that I'm doing, only a lot better, and now I'm following their blogs. It's it's funny. And the topics are education. Um, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with with my job. One of them is a reading blog, and the mm -hmm. other one is a nature diary. Just pictures that I take when I'm walking in the woods, and stuff, mm -hmm. flowers, and and there are a lot of people out there doing. That kind can of you, thing. Can you, share the link? A... can you share? Can you share the links <laughs> of those blogs here? Yeah. Okay. I will. Please. Of course. Uh, we had a, a learning together session a couple of yeah. weeks ago that got I'll started. That it's, it, it it happened because uh, I think Thank it you. was. Uh, am I am I speaking? Am I? You are. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Um, yeah. It it. Uh, some people in Italy were reblogging uh, my posts, and I wasn't sure what you know on the, in the learningtogether.net, and I wasn't sure why they were doing that. So I asked, I put it in a comment, you know, just curious why, and they came back and said uh, and explained. Well, they were taking a MOOC, and uh, so I got them on Learning Together, and they told me about the MOOC, and we met a really interesting professor named Andreas. Uh, who uh, has a really interesting philosophy, and he's going to come on learning together eventually. But we met a whole community of people, and in fact, there's one. Her name is Cloudy, who she's uh, uh, might come on next week uh, at some point. She'll tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. an interesting captioning site. 
and she's using uh, yeah mainly mainly to go go from English to Italian like closed but, captioning uh, or mm, like it, cool it's video. called Amara I think mm. but anyway she'll come on and tell us about it and learn it together but it, you know this is just uh, some of the I think social media actually if you really want to know it works by magic so uh, <laughs> nobody really knows. I mean, it, we're, we're learning about it all the time. It's just, it's a set of, it's kind of like a computer, you know. It's just a set of algorithms that have been set up and people are just using them to uh, to do things that surprise them. And uh, and they, they work. And as people learn how the tools work, they, they begin to leverage it more. And that's the M word that's called marketing, you know. Or we've been using that word marketing, but we're really talking about maybe yeah, right. the L word leveraging you know mm -hmm. we're just trying to we're trying to connect with other communities and so what s marketing does have this uh, commercial pejorative uh, over uh, over but um, you know it's, it's what we try to do actually if you read Dan Pink's book to sell is human for example that he talks about the whole book on that kind of marketing which is mm -hmm. uh, you know just promoting yourself and promoting your communities and your passions and uh, it's an interesting. Uh, I read the book uh, in the car on my way to work, but I found it really fascinating. You got some really good ideas from it. But you, you mean know, you put audio? You listen to the audio audible? Yes. Edition. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dan Pink no. readings on audio. So his are okay. good. Yeah. Cool. I don't know Big how long you want to go. Oh, the picture in in uh, in Michael. This picture, Nina. You asked about the Mike about Michael's pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, Joe, do you There's use swans, Nina? They're, they're black swans. A oh, big black no and way. white birds. No no no, 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 no. They're not swans. They're in the cormorants. picture called at home. Cormorants. They don't look like cormorants either because they don't have a hooked bill. <laughs> You're an expert. Oh yes, yeah, so you're the nature yeah. photographer. I sure. I just photographed cormorants yesterday on my oh, yeah. Mag <laughs> magpies. Of course, as you as you saw magpies. the Hungarian dancer. Okay, magpies. They look more like magpies, but not like European magpies. No, I'm sorry. Australian, this is Australian has nothing magpies. to do with with absolute digression. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do be. have a life beyond teaching. As we all do. Well, yes. Well, I was about to say uh, some podcasters I listen to, uh, like Steve Harganon, for example, uh, stops his broadcast right in one hour. And says, "I, I, I want to be uh, considerate to my, you know, but I, I think he's being a little bit." <laughs> jealous of his own time, but in any event, I mean, I, I do want to, you know, we have been going for uh, an hour and 20 minutes now, so I'd like to give Joseph an opportunity to wrap up if he wants to, and uh, some people Thank here you. might need to get about their Sundays. <laughs> That's Monday. That's not Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's a different situation. But anyway, let's, uh, let's go over to you, Joseph. How long do you want to keep this going? Oh, yeah. Just, uh, I have to say thanks to all of you, Daniel and Maria and Michael and Nina and Scott, I haven't seen you for so long, and TV, and certainly Vance. I've uh, known three of you before, and uh, it's nice to have met you now. Uh, I think uh, media, certainly very important, uh, the networks. Uh, one of my other classes that I teach is print and electronic media. That's an MA course, and I started this like four or five years ago where there was still print media. I think I need to now change the course content because there's less and less uh, of that. Uh, I think the reason why we have media is that we have something to say and if we can say it uh, pe to people that we, are, that we have as friends or our students or our colleagues, I think they will find us and they will find our electronic media or our content on the net. Uh, without a lot of marketing. I think the sharing, I would like to emphasize the sharing aspect and maybe that's what uh, Daniel had in mind as well because you go out of your way Daniel and you actually want to involve your uh, your audience in, in engaging with your with your cause which is great and you're doing it because you really are passionate about that. Uh, so that's that's cool and I'm very happy to see when to have met 
these passionate people. And just one last thing, one uh, one uh, social media or network I use, uh, which I haven't talked about, is my podcast, which is actually I think the longest running. I started like seven years ago my podcast, just one year after uh, I, Apple started in 2005, and. Uh, 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 it's on Podomatic, and if you just Podomatic for the word, you will find it. And for the next episode, I wonder whether you uh, give me permission. I would like to ask you to let me use this uh, the video feed, the recording on YouTube, and make an audio edition for the next episode for the for the upcoming sometime later July. Would, that, would you say who says no? That's uh, fine. How do we find I, I, your podcast? I won't say no, I won't say no but I, I, I do have to say this. I've been in the podcasting game for a long time, and I've never met a podcaster who couldn't resist the possibility to plug his own work. Well done, Joseph. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> it's not my bad. Podcast. <laughs> I know. <laughs> everything, everything, Actually, everything we do is Scott, shareable. Yeah. Scott, I, I should ask you about this, because before this uh, Hangout, I... Try to look, try to find your old podcast, Tokyo Calling, and I know that you took it off the air, right? Oh, it's gone. It's gone, yes. man. But maybe you can share. Maybe with have you? That's, that's such a fantastic series. <laughs> Thanks, but um, I'm, I'm an the, internet the, ghost. The I commute cast, commuter cast, or commute cast? What do well, you call it? I, 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 let's save it for anyway. offline. People don't care okay. about this stuff. All right, <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everyone agrees with the uh, with this thing. Like I just put together like a ten minute episode yeah. with your with your questions, answers, etc. Okay. Yes. Thanks for that. We'd be honored. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, everything we do is Oops, sorry, save the podcast. I I make a uh, from the YouTube recording of this. I render it to an MP3 and I put it on uh, LearningTogether.net. Learning together with the two in it. And, I found it. Uh, yes, and I've uh, uh, set a feed burner there that uh, podcast should podcast the site. There should be a podcast. Which I then can use for editing. Yes, you can. Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, you know, probably this evening I'll put it up. Um, I, can, I use uh, something video recorder. Let me just look it up in my any video, any video converter. Mm -hmm. Any video converter. If you Google that, uh, right. that that's a really brilliant tool for uh, free. And it makes does a really good job of making MP3s or MP4s or whatever from YouTube videos. They're right. Really good for classroom use. You know, if you need to you have connectivity thanks problems for that. in class. Yeah, I'll check it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, so thanks, it, Vance, again, and for everyone. And maybe your wrap up. Like, a, a what's going to happen next week? Um, oh, not sure what's going to happen next week. Uh, I was thinking to connect with WorldCal, which is going on in Glasgow. It ends on, it's starting uh, maybe in a couple of days on the 10th. It starts two days from now and uh, goes until Saturday. So I'm wondering if uh, Saturday, if Sunday is a good time to, you know, people are probably traveling or, you know, hanging out, going around Scotland or getting back home or whatever. It's probably not a good time really to talk to people. I'm going on holiday after that for about a month, so uh, yeah. I'm not really sure what we're going to do next week. Maybe somebody here would like to host, or somebody listening yeah. to the podcast. Could be volunteers. Nora in the stream almost volunteered to talk to us about blended learning. We have I mentioned Cloudy is. Uh, I've also asked her if she wants to present on Amara. So these things sort of come up. They tend to, this time of year they tend to come up week by week. We never know what we're doing. We're, we're, hoping, we're hoping you could tell us, Joseph, about how to uh, uh, broadcast ourselves social in you know, social media so that more people, so we attract more people. <laughs> anyway, well, we, that's exactly well, what we I talked about. I have an answer to that. I mean, if we each post regularly uh, what happened, like, yes, uh, you know, course. And then the link to the upcoming episode. I think that could be uh, a way of doing it. Yeah. Well, that, well, we do we do it, and uh, yeah, sure. I think my my technique seems to be working a little bit. I, I found Google communities to be really effective at, at pulling in people. I think mm -hmm. uh, that oh, seems to the me way, to be uh, the, hmm. yes, the one ahead. thing I forgot. I, something that I wanted to say about TESOL EJ is I think we should add Google Plus as a 
you know, on, on the on the website Community. there is this link, uh, the access, mm -hmm. which lists Facebook and Twitter, but not, mm -hmm. uh, of course, Google Plus because when I was when when that was written it was like a few years ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I think that should be added. Yeah, and then I've done maybe the same on for together. Mm -hmm. And maybe on Google Plus there should be like a that could be a TSO EJ circle or community. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't Absolutely. know who has the keys. Or when I will get the key? Anybody? You're 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 the manager. So yeah, you but you know I don't have the password yet, so the technicalities will have to be worked out. Password. Like you know, rights to write and oh, pass. Yeah, and, I see what you mean. I see yeah. what you mean. Oh, Maggie, yeah. Maggie. Yeah, Maggie. I'll ask her. Yeah. But make sure that you read TSOEJ because it's a wonderful journal. <laughs> yes, uh, Joseph has an article in it in the on the internet column that I'm aware of, and uh, yeah, that's right. It comes out every three months. And it's uh, online and becoming more and more socially connected as we speak. And we're speaking to the guy who's taking on partly the job of doing that. Yeah. So I I'll might try. Do, I don't know if, if this is, I guess, what we call the outro. Uh, this has been Learning <laughs> Together. The date today is July 8th, 2013. Uh, and we're going to make this into. Uh, uh, blog post at learningtogether.net and uh, podcast from there. You'll find the Google Plus embed, uh, sorry, the YouTube embed from this Google Plus Hangout uh, there and also the MP3 recording of it. And it looks like Joseph is going to, uh, or Joseph is doing a very unique screen share here. Um, <laughs> With my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Joseph, you'll, you'll also find some of this on. J O Z S E F H O R dot Potomatic dot com. So yeah, gonna, sorry about uh, that. Of course, hard you can, to you can, to spell words. If you tweet, yeah, if you address. if you tweet this, use learning together. Uh, Maria is doing a, a screen sure. share as well. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> if if you tweet it, use the hashtag learning together with the two learning together, and those tweets will show up in our tweet stream. So. Gosh, Brilliant. thanks everyone Thank for you. turning out again Thank and making you. another fantastic party and evening of it. And, uh, <laughs> and let me teach you a Hungarian time. word. Can I? Yes. yes. When you say goodbye in Hungarian, you do the same thing as in, Amer as in American English. See ya. Ciao. See ya. Oh, see ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. Same thing. <laughs> see ya. Uh -huh. see ya. Spelled the same see way? Ya. Yeah, well, it see sounds ya. like this. <laughs> oh, I'm going to spell it like this in English from now on. See <laughs> okay. you later. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks again, bye. everybody. Peace out. Thank you. Thank you, Vance.